hello friends welcome back once again now in this video we will discuss about the actual congenital anomalies of the kidney and the urinary tract which is called as otherwise cacoot so these are the most common causes of all birth defects they account for around 30 to 50 percent of the cases in kids as end-stage renal disease and they would translate into 2.2 percent in adults they can be a part of syndromic conditions and there are so many syndromes to list which will be tough for me to discuss in this brief video discussions but you can google them and refer to so many different books and you will find them the anomalies can be divided into different types and it will be easy for us to understand and go through each one of them briefly to know what are the some of the important points about each one of them so they can be divided according to structure volume ascent or migration number and form or fusion what are the causes for these congenital anomalies so some of the factors that have been related in various different studies include uteroplacental insufficiency, vitamin A deficiency, low protein diet, all these things leading to a hyperplastic kidneys. And there is something called as oligonephropathy of prematurity, which I will have a separate video discussion on, which is important clinically in adult patients because sometimes you see in third or fourth decade of life they experience chronic kidney disease with elevation in the creatinines and that is because they have a less number of nephrons at the time of the birth and that could be because of these reasons next hyperglycemia leading to agenesis ectopic horseshoe shaped kidneys cystic dysplasias and then anomalies of the ureter Cocaine use, uh, as you know, drug abuse is so rampant in some of the developed countries and developing countries. Um, and hence you could see um, a different renal anomalies. Alcohol intake, again, that's why you recommend no alcohol intake during pregnancy. And then ACE inhibitors, and this is a bold question, um, that ACE inhibitors are contraindicated in pregnancy and they cause a renal dysgenesis. So anomalies of the structure can be further divided like this. So the one in the purple you see just belong to the kidney. The one in the green belongs to the ureter. And the one down there are actually some duplication anomalies of the ureter. So let's start. So cystic dysplastic kidneys, autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease one thing i want to make sure that you are clear in your minds that it's not necessarily that arpkd presents only in kids there the epidemiological studies if you look for arpkd they can present in you know various ages it can they can present before the age of two in one third of the cases they can present before the age of 20 years in one third of the cases and then they can present after the age of 20 years in the remaining cases so it's very important that to remember that ARPKD does not necessarily present in kids it's most common in kids for sure but can also be seen in adults same thing holds true for true for AD PKD and it can be even seen in kids as well but more common again in adults which is generally in fourth or fifth decade of the life when they go on to develop uh, end stage renal disease and then UPJ obstruction UVJ obstruction posterior urethral valves anterior urethral valves normally urethra does not have any valves there are sphincters one at the level of the bladder one at the level of um, 
um, which is external sphincter with the level of um, which is distal I should say um, and that is under the control voluntary control and then that's when you um, have the urge you relax that sphincter and you pee but there is no any mas muscular valve and if you have so depending if it's posteriorly it becomes posterior urethral valve if it's anterior it becomes anterior urethral valve anterior urethral valve is more common posterior urethral valve is more common than anterior urethral valve then you have mega ureters primary vesicular ureteric reflux mega ureter then primary vesicular ureteric reflux um, very commonly seen again in outpatient pediatric nephrology clinics commonest cause for urinary tract infection in females uh, and in males it's posterior urethral valve it's a bold question um, prune belly syndrome then duplication anomalies, ectopic ureter and ureterocele. Anomalies of the number include renal agenesis. Anomalies of the volume could include renal hypoplasia, oligonephropathy of prematurity. And as I say, this is one of the risk factors that we need to assess in adult patients when we are looking for causes for CKD. Although the most common cause for CKD in adults is diabetes and the second one is hypertension. Diabetes accounts for 50% of CKD in adult patients in the entire world and hypertension accounts roughly around 30 to 40%. The remaining 10% is everything else like glomerulonephritis and you know this could be probably included there very small amount um, although no like you know epidemiological studies to really prove that but a very important um, thing that to assess in, in history. Then ACE fetopathy, we just talked about. Anomalies of the ascent or the migration includes horseshoe kidney, where there is a fusion of the kidneys at the, in the lower pole, ectopic kidneys, and then crossed fused ectopia. This particularly, I have pictures, you will better able to understand this looking at the, the cartoon pictures. Now, I would like to discuss a important concept that is you sh that is you should be aware of in assessing kids who are born with congenital anomalies. A famous uh, pathologist, Edith Louise Potter, um, who lived from 1901 to 1993, a professor of pathology in Lyingen Hospital in Chicago, she pointed in perinatal pathology. RH uh, uh, hemolytic disease uh, described a sequence which is nothing but a sequence of things that happen as a result of one anomaly and what she said in her book was two anomalies were observed in almost all of these infants which to my knowledge have not previously been recognized as characteristically associated with renal agenesis these are hypoplasia of the lungs and an abnormal expression and I will explain to you why that happens so when there is a renal agenesis or there is an obstruction to the flow of the urine, normally the fetus will pee into the amniotic fluid and that contributes to the antiabetic amniotic fluid. That amniotic fluid is swallowed, goes into the lungs, leads to the maturation of the lungs. When there is no urine, then obviously it will be leading to oligohydroamnios, so less amniotic fluid. That in turn leads to poor development of the lungs and hence pulmonary hypoplasia. Because of the less fluid in the cavity, the fetus hands will be approximating the cheeks and that will press and use them a peculiar faces and then the feet will have club feet. So these sequence of events that happens due to the renal agenesis with reduced urine output is known as Potter's sequence. This is one of the clinical signs that can be seen in patients who develop congenital anomalies of the kidney and the urinary tract. So here I end the brief discussion about the classification of the congenital, urine, um, congenital anomalies of the kidney and the urinary tract. My next videos will be on individual diseases. Thank you.